get an opening remarks from Coach. Then we'll take <laughs> questions for the players. Once the players leave, the Coach will stay back and take questions. Questions will only be about this game and the next one at Hinkle. Coach, opening remarks, please. Just uh, could not be prouder of this group. Um, you know, Cincinnati's a great team. You know, Wes has done a great job with them. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, I mean, they're just big and physical and athletic, and uh, um, they're terrific defense. We knew going in that was one of the best defense in the country. I think they were 15th. And, you know, defensive efficiency and our guys just, uh, the way they moved the ball, the way they shared it, um, you know, the, the, the effort they gave on the glass. I mean, we gave up some old boards, but they're, a, you know, a top, I think mean, they're 13th in offensive rebounding percentage. So, um, you know, we, we talked a lot about all the deposits we made all year, um, you know, come and do in this game. This is going to be, you know, uh, you know, a kind of whatever's whatever is necessary type game. And that was going to be what was required. Some extraordinary efforts. And I thought we got extraordinary efforts uh, up and down the roster. Could not be prouder of these guys. And of course, uh, you know, Robbie, as he's done, uh, you know, so many times, uh, you know, with a with a monster you know, three to, to, to kind of, you know, give us some separation there. And then, um, you know, we're able to close the game out with some some really intelligent defense, big time rebounding, and and then Jabba with uh, with two huge free throws. So incredibly proud, uh, beat a really good team, got a respect for those guys, um, but uh, excited to be moving on and continue playing. Questions for our student athletes. Go ahead. For both of you, what do you think this moment means to those people? Uh, I, I think it means a lot, you know, uh, being able to play not only just at this time, but being able to get wins in this time is, you know, huge. And uh, to finish out our last home game on top is, you know, not that many teams get to do that. And so for us to be able to do that for them is, you know, amazing. They showed out, you know, all season long. And so we're just trying to pay back what they've done for us. Jason? It, mean, uh, it means so much uh, to just be able to play in front of them. You know, the support, the energy they bring every game just means so much. Just, and we just want to give it back to them for all the hard work they put in, just cheering us on throughout the whole season. Andy? Second half, mid to late, you guys all of a sudden went on a run. What are you guys feeling when that starts to happen? I mean, what, what goes through your mind? Jason? Uh, honestly, just us locking in even more. You know, playing together even more, you know, picking each other's energy even more, just feeding off each other. Uh, I just say trying to stay composed throughout it all. You know, the basketball is a game of runs, and so, you know, we made our run, but, you know, that doesn't just mean the game's over right then and there. And so just being able to, you know, be, uh, you know, just, just keeping our calm, you know, our peace throughout the game and uh, continue to try and just make play after play, next play. And uh, I think we did that pretty well. Robbie at six first half points, 16 second half points. Aziz kind of a, just a different specimen with his length. Was there something that clicked in the second half and the adjustment those made to the big runs? Uh, definitely started hitting more shots. Uh, I had a couple <laughs> of open ones that I missed early, but uh, just uh, my teammates trusted me, you know, uh, getting me the ball, you know, in the spots that I wanted it and just being able to hit the shots. You know, I put in a lot of work, you know, in my game. And so just being able to trust what I've done, you know, not letting a missed shot kind of, you know, affect me and, you know, continue to shoot. Great. Robbie and Jake Kiano, Forrest, now the NIT semifinals. How, how does that sound? What, what are runs you guys have been on? Uh, it, it's been a lot of fun, you know, being able to play with this guy again. Uh, it's been amazing. You know, obviously we played two years of high school. You know, it's our second year together here. Uh, we've had a lot of memories together, a lot of winning together, and so we're just looking forward to, to continue to win. Yeah, and playing with Robbie again is a blessing. You know, hey, when I'm in high school, it was so much fun. We, like you said, we built so many memories, and even now, these are memories I'll never forget, and I'm so grateful to, you know, play with him and, Got the Oak Forest duo back together, doing it together. Yes, sir. Sir, your your three to put yourself back ahead. Uh, did you know that was going in, or are you surprised when they don't go? <laughs> uh, that one, I, as I shot it, I kind of felt it. I started to jog back a little bit as it was, you know, going in. But uh, just like I said, you know, trusting what I've done, you know, I'm, I'm capable of hitting shots like that, you know, early in the game, end of the game, no matter what time it is. Just, you know, having the confidence, no matter you know how many shots I miss or make, just being able to shoot that kind of shot, and, you know, helped us, you know, push us over the hump. And even if you miss, I'll get the rebound. Yeah, he'll get the rebound. <laughs> Sir, you guys have to look at the very driven team through last How much are you driven? Even now, by the you start? Um, we've been, you know, like like we said throughout this whole NIT, it, it definitely sucked. It was a gut punch, but we're even more driven just to be able to continue playing. You know, not a lot of teams have the opportunity to 
you know, continue playing in March. And we're just driven even more because we want to continue to play with each other, continue to practice with each other, and continue hanging around with each other. So we're just driven to keep playing and be around each other. Uh, I think, like Shirt says all the time, I think our, our motivation to continue to play really isn't the outside stuff. You know, yeah, of course, the uh, being left out of the NCAA tournament hurt, but I think it's more just the, you know, the the love for each other. You know, the being able to continue to spend more time with each other. You know, I think just that that being able to do that is kind of driving us to to want to extend the season as long as possible. Anything else for student athletes? Robbie, Jason, you're free to go. Thank you. Thank you. Not so lucky. Uh, Ask them all the hard questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the hard, hard questions. Uh, that's right. I'll answer them all about you guys. <laughs> questions just on this game and Hinkle. Questions? Yes. There are some teams that don't go to the IT. When you contrast that to tonight, the emotions on both teams out there. Yeah, I think it's. I mean, you know, I mean, without getting on a soapbox, I think if you have a chance, uh, everybody's different. So I'll say this, like, <clears throat> us not playing was never an option. Um, if you're competing and you're a competitor and you have an opportunity to go play and, and play great competition and challenge yourself, like, that would be crazy for me to end my seniors, you know, year or a group that really cares about each other like this and say, ah, you know, uh, you know, we're, we're going to, we're, we're just done. We're done with each other or, or. You know, the portal, because I, I think, and I don't know, but I believe all 68 teams in the NCAA tournament accepted their invitations, and they're managing the portal as well. So um, I think I think there's maybe some, uh, you know, some, some misdirection there in terms of, you know, what the real reason is. But this group, you know, I've said all year, like, their superpower is how much they care, how much they care about each other, how much they care about winning, how much they care about their performance, how much they care about these fans, how much they care about every, how much they care about Indiana State. I mean, that's that's a superpower because they don't want this to end. And, um, you know, so so I, I, I would never have, have cut that off from them. And I think credit Cincinnati because, you know, uh, you could tell, I mean, how much it meant to them as well. And um, but it's, you know, if you're if you're really a competitor, like how could you not love being out there in, in that atmosphere, that environment, playing incredible competition like that's as good as it gets. There's so much, you know, you never feel more alive than you do out there in, that, in those type of battles. Background. Coach, you got your double game out of uh, Robbie, Ryan, and Jason. Uh, I thought the, the energy that X gave you there, that, in that spurt, his couple assists there, the big four and three, they talked about his spurt there for you. Yeah, he's just, you know, sixth man of the year. He just does it every game. You know, he finds ways to contribute. He's an amazing passer. You know, we've been together six years, and I recruit him for years, so he's, you know, basically, you know, uh, like a, a third son. Um, you know, we've known each other seven years, and he's just, a, you know, he's so smart. He's so tough. He's such a great teammate. I mean, um, you know, he he, uh, he coaches much more than I do, so he's over there standing up, you know. he's uh, So whether he's playing or he's coaching, I mean, he's just, you talk about a guy who's, emotional investment in the team is not predicating his playing time. Like that's super rare in today's world that, you know, your emotional investment in something's not dictated by how much time you're playing. He played 11 minutes tonight. And there's games where he's played, you know, he, he's played a lot the last two NIT games. And, you know, Swope didn't play much in those games. And these guys, they just, the ability to enjoy somebody else's success, uh, the ability to come off for him, like he's, he's the rarest of birds because he can really, really play, but he doesn't have to play. If that makes sense, you know, like he's he's a, an excellent player who doesn't have to. He's not going to powder mope if he's not getting his time and he'll be ready when I call on him and he goes out and, and, and whatever the team needs, he provides. And he's done that all year long. And, uh, you know, we're, we're nowhere close to this without having him. Go ahead. Coach, you about Julian and Larry, he had four fouls you know, coming up in the second half. How do you play around that with one of your better guys who's, who's a four general you know, yeah. four fouls? Well, we're fortunate, you know, we have... You know, one thing we're not short on is point guards, you know, with Ryan and Swope, and we got a lot of guys that can handle the ball. But, you know, Ju, Ju gets four fouls, and, you know, I think that's one of those things, like Ryan got two fouls during the second half. Like, I think, you know, every, uh, I'm not going to foul my guys out. You know, I'm going to let the referees do that. You know, I'm not going to just sit them because they have two fouls or four fouls. I mean, you got to trust your guys, and, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't want to be the one to, to – to foul them out, let them do that. And, and I thought uh, Jude did a really good job of playing intelligently. We, we took him out when he got his third for a minute or two, and then we got him a minute or two when he got his fourth. But he went back with the last five and a half, six minutes, and he was he was terrific down the stretch. And, uh, you know, um, 
you know, I thought, I thought, uh, and it'll probably go underrated, but, you know, his defense and certainly Swope's defense on Jizzle James there late in the second half was as about elite as it gets. I mean, uh, you know, in, in, in the ball screen coverages and what they were doing, both those guys were fantastic on, on the defense front of Florida, helped close the game. Coach, 19 points all 10 turnovers, how you see in the second I was just curious what your game plan was, second to that second half, what you did I thought we were just, I thought we were just had a better present ball. I thought we were, you know, we told in the first half, we thought we were dying at too many ball screens. You know, we really tried to get a little more aggressive and have a better presence on the basketball. We talk a lot about always, you know, deflections and trying to contest passes and, you know, the, developing that mindset to be able to, to, to get in the ball a little bit. We're not big, so particularly against Cincinnati, you know, there, I mean, you know, Lukosh is 6'8", I think Skillings is 6'6", is six, six or 6'7", six, or whatever, and, you know, our guards, Jews, you know, 6'2", six, 6'3", six, Ryan 6'3", six, 6'4", six, Swope's 5'10", you know, and so we have to get underneath them and, and, and get some pressure, impact the ball, and I thought second half we did a much better job of, of, of trying to maybe disrupting what they wanted to do and but credit them I mean it felt like every time you know we, we had a chance they just they made a shot you know particularly uh, felt like I don't know I mean I, I know it says Lukosz just missed eight threes but I don't remember them it just felt like every one he shot went in so uh, but I thought we did a good job and then they got us out in transition which for us is the best thing we do you know if we can get deflections create turnovers um, this team with its speed and its skill is at its best in the open floor and so we were able to get out and convert those 10 to, to 19 points. <laughs> Well, I, I hope, I mean, it's not that far, so I would hope we get all 8,000, but no, the fans, uh, you know, that environment, it, it, you know, and it's been like this, you know, a lot of the season, so I don't want everybody to think like, oh, this was like an anomaly, like it, it has been that electric, that packed, like this year, it's one of the best environments in college basketball, and it's a hard place to come play, everybody's like, well, you know, people always wonder, you know, why, why, uh, you know, power six schools don't don't come here. Uh, now you people know why power six schools don't come here, right? Like that's that's what it is. And so when you get into these scheduling debates and you say, oh, well, they didn't play, you know, well, they're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna get these games. So, um, you know, and 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 again, I don't, I don't, not like I'm bashing the power six, like. It doesn't make sense for them to play those games. Like the way the system is set up, you know, they don't want to come and, and lose on the road to, to you know, Indiana State. So, um, but uh, these fans have made this, you know, we lost one home game all year. And uh, uh, these fans have, you know, the two things that create an incredible home court environment, atmosphere and energy, the, uh, you got to have great players, which we do. And you got to have fans that are just, you know, bring energy and passion. And I think, you know, you see that when you come in the Holman Center. Right, right. As a follow up. Yeah, he was, I mean, you know, I mean, he's, you know, two games when he have 25 and now 21. So he's averaging 23 a game in his two starts. I mean, he doesn't look like a freshman. You know, we, we scrimmaged Cincinnati back in October. Uh, you know, at Cincinnati, so we had a chance to look at those guys. Now, now Bendango, some of those guys weren't eligible at the time because of the transfer rules. And Robbie didn't play for us because he had a bad back. But to see his development, um, you know, to my Jizzle James, development from what he was there to what he is now, I mean, night and day, he looked poised, confident. He was getting to his spots. I mean, we had a lot of trouble with him in the pick and roll. I mean, that was, you know, Lukosius coming off screens and shooting and, and, and Jizzle James playing the pick and roll were probably the two things that gave us you know, the most trouble and, and watching him score 25 against Bradley, then come in the night and do this was, you know, he's he's very, very impressive. He's got a chance to be a, you know, all league guy at the Big 12 level. Uh, the way he plays, his poise, his confidence, his shooting ability, but he get to his spots and, and he can, you know, he can pass out of there as well. Back you took your last time out there uh, by Isaiah's last free throw there. Was it Kelly kids to foul if you missed, or was that something? Yeah. That uh, no, it was. Uh, so I was debating because we wanted to foul if we missed because the window of time was right. So we wanted to be in what we call smack, but there was also like a little bit of confusion. So I didn't want to. I didn't want to like you know free swope, which maybe I did, um, which probably bad coaching. But the the goal was to communicate that you know. Uh, if we missed a free throw, we wanted to let them rebound and take a dribble and, and smack because the window of time was going to, you know, it would work in our favor, right? So um, and if we made it, we we're going to be at what we call prevent, like a, a zone press just to make them take time, bring the ball to the floor. And then we missed the free throw. 
we were able to foul um, and then got the free throw rebound to close it. So that was why I used it. But it turned out to be a, a probably not the, the brightest thing because Swope missed the second free throw. So uh, that's on me. Last question, Hunter. You mentioned the fast break, you know, get on transition. I really kind of decided the game there in those last 10 minutes. How much can you kind of just pinpoint some of your guys passing, you know, whether it's Bledson making that, you know, half court dish right to the rack for, for Julian for layup or some of the other passing you got from Swole as well after the swim of three games? Yeah, I just think, I mean, look, we're, you know, you look at, I mean, we're, we we play, you know, with great pace. I think that's a big part of our offense is trying to, to, to you know, play with, with uh, you know, in transition, I think. Uh, and then we have a lot of guys who can really handle and pass the basketball, you know, which, which uh, you know, is a, is a luxury uh, to have where you got that many guys that can, can handle the rock and, and, and can, you know, are willing passers, not just cable, but willing passers. And so, uh, you know, you look at our numbers. I think we had 18 assists tonight. I think we've, you know, had, had crested 20 the first two games, the NIT each game, and we're close to 18 a game, uh, you know, when you look at our season total. So, you know, it's right in line with what we've been. You know, Cincinnati is, I said in the beginning, I think they're the 15th-ranked defense in the country in terms of defense efficiency. I mean, it's a that's a monster defensive team with length and athleticism. And so for us to put up 53 in the second half, it's just a credit to our guys in terms of, you know, their ability to, to, to really execute and, and, and generate, work together collectively to generate great shots. And transition is a big part of that. Coach, thank you. Thanks, guys. Sorry.